In this video, I will explain how to find the cost-minimizing combination of capital and labor given an ISO quant line and ISO cost lines. So let's consider the following example. It says, find the combination of capital and labor that will allow a firm to produce Q equals 16 units of some good at the lowest cost. So here's the idea. Some firm wants to produce exactly 16 units of some good, and they can use a combination of capital and labor to do so. Now, if we consider this graph right here, on the y-axis of this graph, we have capital, so the units of capital used by the firm. And on the x-axis, we have labor, so the total units of labor used by the firm. Now, to answer this question, there's two types of lines in this graph that we have to understand. The first is the purple line. So this purple line is known as our isoquant line. And what it tells us in the graph is that every combination of capital and labor on this line produces a quantity of output of exactly 16 units. So for example, let's consider the point C. We can see that point C lies on this isoquant line, and this is the point where the firm uses 16 units of capital and 16 units of labor. And when they do so, they're able to produce a quantity of output of 16. Now we can also see that at point B right here, this is where the firm uses 32 units of capital and eight units of labor, and they're also able to produce exactly 16 units of output. And lastly, we can also see that at point A, this also lies on the same isoquant line, and this is the combination where the firm uses 64 units of capital and only four units of labor. So when they use this combination of capital and labor, they're also able to produce 16 units of output. So if points A, B, and C are all combinations of capital and labor that allow us to produce the exact same output the question is, which combination of capital and labor allows us to produce this output at the lowest cost? So to figure that out, we have to understand what the blue lines are telling us. So the blue lines are the ISO cost lines. And every point on these individual lines represents a combination of capital and labor that have the exact same total cost of production. So for example, if we look at this first blue line, Every point on this line has a total cost of $128. So for example, if we consider this extreme point on the line at 16 units of labor and zero units of capital, the total cost of this combination is $128. And similarly, if we consider the other extreme all the way up here, if we use 64 units of capital and zero units of labor, that also has a total cost of $128. And we can see that point B lies on this ISO cost line. So the combination of 32 units of capital and eight units of labor, the total cost of that combination is $128. Now, if we look at points A and C, we can see that these two points lie on a different ISO cost line. So on this ISO cost line, the total cost of each combination of capital and labor on this line is $160. So what we see here is that points A, B, and C, they're all different combinations of capital and labor that allow us to produce 16 units of output. But at point B, this is the combination of capital and labor that allows us to produce that output at the lowest cost. So that will be our answer for this one. We'll say point B. And again, that's when we use K is equal to 32 units of capital and labor is equal to eight units. So that's our answer for this one. This is the point where we're able to produce 16 units of output at the lowest cost. Now, something important to understand mathematically is that the point that allows us to produce a certain quantity at the lowest cost will be the point where the ISO cost line is tangent to the ISO quant line. So that occurs at point B in our example. So remember, tangent just means that the two lines are touching each other, but they're not intersecting. And mathematically, here's what we can also say. The lowest cost will occur where the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor is exactly equal to the marginal product of capital divided by the price of capital. And all that means is that the marginal product that we're getting from increasing our labor per dollar spent on labor is equal to the marginal product that we're able to get from capital per dollar spent on capital. So at point A, we can see that the isoquant line is very steep. And what we'll notice about point A is that the firm would benefit by moving down the isoquant curve. In other words, if they reduced their total capital used and started increasing their total units of labor used. So if they increased their labor, if they went to the right on this graph. 
And another way to say that is that at point A, labor is more cost effective. So it would be more cost effective to spend our dollars on labor and reduce our total capital used because that would reduce our cost. That would push us closer to this total cost line where we're at 128 as opposed to 160. And similarly, at point C, the firm would benefit if they moved up this isoquant line. So if they reduced their total labor used and they increased their total capital used. So at this point, capital is more effective per dollar. And at point B, this is the point where the ISO cost line is exactly tangent to the ISO quant line. So that's telling us that the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor. So this ratio is exactly equal to the marginal product of capital divided by the price of capital. So that is why point B represents the combination of capital and labor that allows us to produce these 16 units at the lowest cost.